The episode opens up with one of the remaining uninfected scientists falling into a trap of Peter and other goo zombies. Since the uninfected are starving now, the goo zombies are taking advantage of that and setting baits and traps. Next, while Haddock is upset for whatever mess he has created, he gets a text in Constance's phone. Since she has been gone for many days without any information, the Alera Corporation is sending a retrieval team in six hours. Haddock fears and grabs a suitcase full of explosives, planting them everywhere around the base. On the other hand, Sarah has received Julia's spinal fluid and is miraculously recovering. Since it cured Sarah, Julia believes she can be helpful in creating a cure for all the infecteds. However, transfusing her spinal fluid to everyone will kill her eventually so Alan calls it a Stoopy's idea. Afterwards, Alan is informed by Dutchamp that the remaining uninfected scientists are disappearing one by one. Since the goo zombies have been dormant for the last two days, Dutchamp and Alan are surprised to see them setting traps and capturing the uninfected. Even more surprising is how the virus is capable of complex thought. Alan explains that the virus has evolved and has created a new kind of organism which has the ability to think just like humans. Later, Alan tells Haddock to be prepared for the goo zombies that will soon attack in bulk. Whereas Haddock informs about Ilaria sending more troops to Abs, they are interrupted by Mixa, who gives an update that there are still 20 uninfected scientists and five security personnel. In order to escape from Ilaria, Haddock shares his plan to lure the troops into the base and blow them up with the explosives. Also, he mentions about the bunker in the base, Julia's cabin, which is earthquake resistant. So, before the base explodes, Haddock plans to gather all the survivors in the bunker and escape outside in the snow through the escape tunnel attached with the bunker. While Alan tries to calm Dutchamp and asks him to gather all the uninfected scientists into the sunroom where there are no air ducts and the door is secured. Unfortunately, Peter eavesdrops them and prepares for his own plan. In the meantime, Mixa is mad for not being trusted enough by Haddock to even know about the bunker all these years. However, Haddock tries to win back Mixa's loyalty as he reasserts himself as his dad and asks for his help to take down Alaria's troop and save the remaining uninfected. Later, Haddock takes Mixa to the bunker cabin and explains it was made for his biological daughter years before Mixa was brought to Abs. When he mentions that Julia is his daughter, Mixa infuriates and yells at Haddock for causing so many deaths and risking the lives of millions of people just to have his daughter back at the base. Back in the lab, Julia discovers a way to cure the virus by using the virus itself. When she shares it with Alan, he mocks her for not destroying the NARVIK and bringing it back to the base despite knowing its consequences. However, Julia believes she did the right thing and wants to continue with the cure and inject it to the infected. Meanwhile, a fully recovered Sarah wakes up and suggests to slow down the virus using cryogens until the cure shows its effects. Elsewhere, the goo zombies add their contagious goo to the sprinkler system and turn it on, spraying the black goo inside the sunroom and infecting all the remaining scientists. In the next scene, Alan and team are surprised by the vector's coordination and intelligence. Also, they realize that all the bait and traps by the zombies was to gather the uninfected in one place. Before Ilaria arrives, the team decides to implement their plan after telling Haddock about the cure to Since the goo zombies fear Haddock and Julia, they decide to go downstairs together and use the cryogen spray to freeze the zombies and inject them with the cure. As they step ahead, they are encountered by Peter, who freezes after they spray him with the cryo fluid and inject him. While he collapses, the other zombies approach Haddock and Julia. Soon, the father-daughter manage to freeze and inject a lot of infected ones, but few of them manage to flee into the ducts. Fortunately, the goo zombies injected with the cure eventually turn into a normal human. Alan and the team prepare everyone to go down to the bunker. Meanwhile, Alan is concerned about Julia who is having recurring symptoms. Suddenly, the alarm goes off since Ilaria has arrived outside. While Alan, Mixa and Haddock go out to delay Ilaria, everyone inside goes to the bunker. The trio go into the snow and find that Ilaria has set explosives in a decoy attack with drones. When there's an explosion, Haddock is injured protecting Mixa. Since the trio are busy outside, the real attackers of Ilaria paradrop into the base. Soon, everyone locks themselves into the bunker including Haddock, Alan and Mixa. Haddock wants to detonate early because the attacker named Scythe of Ilaria is an assassin and is the worst of all the silver-eyed immortals. Scythe has arrived at the base with his two female minions. While the remaining cured scientists are traveling to the bunker in the elevator, Scythe slaughters them all. Back in the bunker, Sarah gets constant headaches and ultimately turns into a silver-eyed immortal after getting Julia's spinal fluid. Later, Mixa activates the explosives since the remaining scientists 
have not arrived yet. Sadly, the explosives don't work as they are dismantled by the Ilarius. The three attackers directly go to find an ARVIK but they don't find it. So, Scythe orders his minions to kill everyone and bring Haddock alive to him. It is revealed that Scythe is just a teenager. Following that, Scythe informs his superiors that the NARVIK is missing. So, he gets a text and is ordered to recover the virus and its new cure, bring in Hiroshi alive and kill everyone else. After Mixa finds out that a group of scientists have been slaughtered by Scythe, Elm, Mixa, and Peter go upstairs to investigate and bag up all the corpses. Upstairs, Peter gets emotional for being a part of all this mess. Meanwhile, Sarah and Julia discuss their future as immortal beings who will never get sick or die of any disease. As they converse, we learn that Haddock is over 500 years old. Out on the ice, Talak questions why Sergio is leading the Inuit village's evacuation, although he's an Ilaria employee. However, Anana defends Sergio for saving the village. Despite his sister's fondness towards Sergio, Talak warns him not to be around Anana. It's because Talak believes Sergio will never change for good and worries he'll hurt Anana. The next morning, Anana is pissed at her brother for judging Sergio. Back in Abs, Haddock and team look at CCTV footage of the scythe. Haddock reminds everyone that even though he looks 15, he is centuries old and is experienced at slaughtering. Elsewhere, Scythe and his minions also go through some CCTV footage and find the footage of Haddock killing Constance. Turns out consents with Scythe's mother and now he is enraged to avenge her. Just then a big suitcase-like box starts to thump and Scythe orders his minion to slow her down. It seems like there's a human inside. Meanwhile, Scythe and his minions are distracted by another footage of Alan. Haddock, Mixa, and Julia discussing their plan to destroy the virus and care. Next, Mixa and Julia prepare for their plan and reveal that they are setting a trap for Scythe. During the conversation, Mixa expresses his disappointment to have spent his whole life caring for Haddock, but everything Haddock was doing was only for Julia. Mixa mentions that he just wants to finish off the zombies and leave Abs forever. Although Julia tries to console him and build a sibling relationship, Mixa confesses he already has a sister, Anana. Soon, Hdake and Alan go out into the snow and collect a canister from the frozen storage. There, they are confronted by Scythe and his minions. After Scythe threatens Haddock, the latter throws the canister over the thin ice and one of the minions grabs it and falls. Immediately, Haddock and Alan draw guns, but Scythe and his remaining minion have disappeared. So the two go back to the bunker. Later, Scythe and his minion go through the CCTV footage before Consance's death and discover that Haddock has a daughter. Then, Scythe kisses his minion and orders her to track down the daughter and bring her to him. While Haddock, Julia, Alan, and Mixa are returning to the bunker, the elevator stops and goes dark. When the power comes back, Julia is missing. Haddock realizes that Scythe has abducted her and suggests to wait and follow his rules without provoking him so that he doesn't hurt Julia. Upon reaching the bunker, Alan insists on finding Julia and fighting Scyther. However, Haddock suggests they should wait for Scythe's demands and figure out what he's planning. Just then, Scythe sends a message asking Haddock to show himself up. Along with that, the psychopath kid has sent Julia's severed finger in the can. Shortly, a panic ensues. When Haddock decides to go to Scythe, Mixa stops him quoting his own words back to him about acting while angry. Since the note told Haddock to go to isolation, or he will cut more off Julia, Mixa tells his plan to infuse halothane gas through the vents which will knock out Scythe and his minions. So, Peter and Alan decide to go into the ducts to open them. Elsewhere, Julia wakes up to find her finger severed and an explosive around her collar. Soon, Alan and Peter crawl around the vents and open them. Surprisingly, Haddock remains silent and doesn't activate the halothane gas. Meanwhile, Mixa steps outside the bunker with NARVIK virus and the cure. He stands in front of a camera outside the isolation room and tells Scythe he has what they want. After a while, Haddock goes to see Scythe and begs for Julia's life. Sadly, Scythe has captured both Julia and Mixa and fitted them with explosive collars. Although Scythe wants Haddock to choose one who gets to live, Haddock refuses to play the sick game. Because Haddock doesn't want any of his children to die, he doesn't pick. Then, Mixa tells Haddock he doesn't have to choose and takes off his collar before confessing he loves his father. There's an explosive blood splatter and unfortunately, Mixa dies. Following that, Haddock kicks Scythe and grabs the tablet to deactivate Julia's collar. Meanwhile, Alan rushes in and hits Scythe on the head while Peter holds him. While Haddock grieves for Mixa, the TV screens inside the room show the box that Scythe brought with him. His minion opens the box. To everyone's surprise, the box has Julia's mother inside it. 
The episode cuts directly to day 235 after the spread of the virus. Alan has a silver-eyed immortal tied to a chair and is beating him with a pipe. As he beats the man, he asks him where she is, presumably Julia. But, the man who fears Ilaria rather than Alan beating him, doesn't reveal anything. He mocks Alan as no single government authorities believed him about Ilaria. Furthermore, he claims that Ilaria is everywhere and is expanding. Back in the present, Scythe is cuffed in a chair, and Julia queries him about her mother and strikes him when he doesn't reveal anything. Julia goes to Haddock, who is grieving for Mixa. Haddock admits that Mixa made it easier for him because he knew that his adoptive father would choose his biological daughter over him anyway. On being asked Haddock reveals that since he didn't want to give false hope and put Julia in grave danger, he never mentioned her mother. He reveals that after Ilaria abducted his wife, he was forced to create NARVIK. Out on the ice, Inanna and Talik look for Sergio who left after Talik's warning to stay away from Inanna. Back in abs, Alan and Peter try to interrogate Scythe who isn't scared of their threats. Instead he asks them to go through the news. Turns out there's a viral outbreak and hundreds are infected already. Since the news mentions that one of the symptoms is black blood, Alan and Peter realize it's NARVIK. And, Alan assumes Sergio got the virus off the base. Meanwhile, Segrio, who is trying to reach abs, collapses on the ice. When he wakes up, he is smacked by Scythe's minion. She explains she wants some backup with the Scythe prisoner and shows off the cure and virus to Sergio. Also, she reveals that Scythe wanted to be captured so that the CDC can be distracted with him. While Ilaria spreads the virus in the mass, at the base, Haddock and team go through the news and conclude it's Narvike, the strain without the goo zombies. Since they are sure it can be contained and cured, Hiroshi, Julia and Alan decide to go to and find Scythe's minion who's hiding in another secured level. Whereas, Peter stays back to guard Scythe. Before the trio arrives, Sergio knocks at the Ilaria girl. When they enter, he points his gun at them and asks Haddock about the list of children abducted from Inuit village for Ilaria. While Alan assumes Sergio works for Ilaria, the latter shoots at the bickering minion of Scythe and mentions he no longer works for them. Meanwhile, Julia opens the box and frees her mother, who is very confused and thinks her daughter is still a little girl. Next, Haddock recites the list of the children and where they were placed to Sergio. After getting the list, Sergio leaves, giving them the virus and the cure, which Haddock gives to Alan. Down in the bunker, when Sarah doesn't look well enough, a doctor takes her to his lab for a blood test. Elsewhere, Peter frees Scythe and it is revealed that Peter has been working for Ilaria, and he was the one who got the virus off the base. As he complains about what Ilaria has put him through, he hands Scythe a detonator. In order to make it look like Scythe escaped, he knocks out Peter by smashing him to the door. Meanwhile, Julia's mother comes to her senses once she's off the drugs. She recognizes Julia and regrets not leaving Haddock and his ambitions sooner. Also, she is happy to meet Alan. Soon they are joined by Haddock, who hasn't aged at all. Suddenly an alarm goes off as Talak, Anana, and Sergio arrive at the base to help. They've brought enough snowmobiles to evacuate the base. After Haddock tells them about Mixa, Anana breaks down. Meanwhile, an injured Peter arrives and tells everyone that Scythe has escaped. Haddock fears but Alan wants to take the chance and evacuate the base. The two of them discuss Scythe's weakness in front of traitor Peter. During the evacuation, Alan gives the virus and the cure to Julia, saying the world's fate is in her hands now. As they bid goodbye, Julia kisses Alan which infuriates Peter who has been spying on them from a corner. Next, we learn that Sarah's blood test results have arrived and she is pregnant. Now that everyone's about to leave the base, Scythe confronts them and blows the bomb, causing the base to collapse with many casualties. Afterwards, when Alan wakes up unhurt, he finds Julia at knife point by Scythe. An injured Jane approaches Scythe and begs him to free Julia, but he slices her throat with his knife and kills her. Then, Scythe drags Julia to an Ilaria helicopter. Before the helicopter takes off, Alan throws Constance's head inside. While Scythe is distracted, Alan gets a chance to get in the helicopter. However, when Scythe turns around and is about to stab Alan, Julia hands him the virus and cure and pushes him out of the helicopter. Soon, the helicopter flies with Julia abducted by Scythe. The episode again cuts off to 235th day, where Alan is reading a French newspaper that has news about the outbreak of NARVIK. He gets an Ilaria card with his cafe bill and makes a cross symbol on the wall behind him with a chalk. Later, he meets Peter and tells him he has found Julia and asks him to meet at a checkpoint. Afterwards, Alan stands dot next to Ilaria building. Inside, in a board meeting, a whole room of silver-eyed people waited for their leader. The episode ends when the leader arrives in the meeting hall with a prosthetic finger, and it turns out to be Julia. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.